Hi, I'm Yen. Hello, I'm Fiona. In this episode, we're going to do a beginner's guide for AHA and DHA. Yes, I'm super excited about this one because clearly I could be the noob for once in this case in Beauty and the Geek. <laughs> so if you, if you like what you're watching here, uh, hit the bell button and subscribe and let's get started, shall we? This is kind of awkward, Yen, because you know we're doing this like during the um, clearly the circuit breaker period. Um, so yes. we are clearly not sitting side by side, but we're kind of sitting side by side. Yeah? And remotely, yes. We're kind of like filming this in our own place. Mm. So we're thinking, why not like, give it a go? Um, you know, despite the technical challenges, I hope this episode is going to turn out fine. It will be gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so today is a beginner's guide for AHA and BHA. We have a rocky start, we have a rocky introduction. I know, but it's so okay. So let's go into a smooth yeah. content. Yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, I'm going to begin with this one because mm. clearly I am the beginner okay. and the noob here. You've been trying to talk to me about this whole thing about AHA and BHA and I've been really putting it aside and we thought, you know what, let's just put it into one episode and, and just see how it goes. So I'm going to begin. What exactly is AHA mm. and what exactly it's it's BHA? Like for those of us who have no idea what you're okay. talking about. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with something that's probably more relevant or more applicable to okay. you, which is AHA. Okay. So AHA stands for alpha hydroxy acid. Wow. Uh, whilst BHA stands for beta hydroxy acid. So let's go to AHA. So uh, to give you a little bit uh, a background, the nature of AHA is actually it's water soluble. Okay. So uh, some of the benefits include things like stimulate collagen growth, uh, lighten pigmentation, now you're talking. or general and yeah, general anti-aging property. So because it's water soluble and you also love water molecules, that's why it hydrates the skin pretty well. Uh, so it actually it's available in quite a few fair bit of products if you can find a market. Okay. Yeah. So some of the people they use HA uh, a lot of time for exfoliation. Mm to kind of like do sort of like a chemical peel. That's why a lot of people when they think about HA, they think about, oh my god, is it very harsh? Is it something that's not suitable for sensitive skin? Yeah. Or is it not suitable for dry skin? Yeah. Um, on the contrary, because of its nature, which is water soluble and they love water molecules, it's actually quite okay for dry skin. Uh, if your skin is a bit sensitive, I think it's just about um, adjusting the intensity, the percentage of the HA in the product. Right, so yep. in my case, I mm. have combination skin. So, you know, basically it's usually mm. the T-zone that's a little oily, but, um, you know, like the cheek areas are typically are the ones that are a little bit drier. Um, so, so mm. yeah, what, what percentage of the HA would you recommend in, in my case, you know, if I have combination okay. skin? Okay, yeah. sure. So for first timer, uh, I would say go for five percent or less. Okay. So probably that's a rule of thumb. But if you really think that your skin is extremely sensitive, then I guess you might want to go all the way down to like three. But I think a lot of products in the market right now, right, they actually hovers around mm, five or below. Okay. So that's something that you can consider with. So that's for first timer. Um, but if you're using like a five, it doesn't mean that use daily. Uh, probably you can try using like once or twice a week and see how your skin actually reacts to it. Uh, from there, you'll slowly change the, the form, not change the formulation, but you can increase the frequency from twice to three times. Okay, so if I'm using it any like two to three times a week, um, should I, mm. how would I incorporate into my current regime? Okay, okay. So if today you are purely using AHA as a chemical mm -hmm. pill, you know, just to kind of like brighten up your skin, get rid of dead skin cells. Probably you'll just use it as a uh, once a week uh, where you apply and you wash it off. Oh. So it's almost like, you know, that sort of uh, mask sort of idea. Okay, okay. Yeah, so with that, probably you have to go something more intense because you're going to wash it off. Uh. Um, so in the market right now, right, with those AHA pills, right, it goes up maybe into like 30% of AHA. Did you just say 30%? So you leave it on for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you leave it on for five minutes and you wash it off. Wow. So it's almost like a scrub. Wow. Yep. So you just, you, uh, you just jump today, from five to mm. 30. So how do I sort of manage that? Do I do five or do I do 30? Mm. Okay, so for five is like you leave it in the skin. You ah, don't remove it. I see. Uh, so it's like a toner. Maybe it's an AHA toner okay, okay. that actually stimulate your collagen growth okay. or to kind of like lighten your pigmentation. Mm. Uh, but if you're using... Uh, in the night, right, what you have to avoid is actually um, retinol. 
and vitamin C. Wait, you just said I should avoid mm. uh, retinol and vitamin C at night. So you're saying that with HA, HA is recommended to use uh, for a night regime, at night. right? And then when I use the night yes. regime, that's yes. where I do away with the vitamin C and the retinol. So let's get into the next part of, I think for myself as a note right now that you have talked so much about the benefits mm-hmm. of AHA. You know, this is a key breaker period. Um, not a lot of shops are open. So where can I get all mm. these products and what would you recommend? And and I and I and I want to go very okay. extreme, okay? <laughs> so give me one product, right? That is cheap and good. Mm, okay, I, I'm the cheaper person. <laughs> I use a lot of cheap AHA, AHA products, but they they work really, really okay. well. Okay, let's begin um, with that. I would say my very my very first AHA product probably is uh Calls RX. Uh, it's a Korean brand. It's ah. actually called the White Hate AHA power liquid uh, it's supposed to help you to prevent the onset of whiteheads which is really really important okay. yeah okay. Uh, i like it because uh it has seven percent it's more than five okay. uh, so for me i love it because my skin can actually take it i actually use it maybe like three times a week okay that's good uh, seven percent glycolic acid so glycolic acid is a type of aha acid oh. so it's lactic acid oh. which is derived from milk yeah, so these are some of the common AHA um, acid that you will find in products. So um, today this is cheap. This is probably twenty something dollars. I think you can find in Watsons or even online. So with this product, right, probably you will use it like three times a day, three times a week. Sorry, three times a week. Uh, after cleansing, you just kind of like wipe it mm. with cotton pad, and that will be quite sufficient. Um, the other AHA product that I'm using, uh, it's pretty much similar. It's actually Medicube. It's a zero pore pack. Oh, this one! Uh, and it's also AHA. Yeah, I think you've seen it yeah. on Facebook yeah, yeah, yeah. or Instagram. I have. Uh, their sponsored uh, ads keep coming. Everywhere, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, this is a combination of AHA okay. and some BHA, but I think the AHA component is a lot more. If I recall, yeah, it's like a little round pad that is infused mm. with the liquid, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep, correct. So initially, I thought that it's not going to stay mm. moist. It's going to dry up. But this jar I have, it's like more than six months. Okay. It's still extremely moist inside. The content is very well um, hydrated, which I love it. So those are mm. your two key products for HA that I think for someone like myself yep. who um, is thinking about, you know, adding um, HA into the regime, that would be a great place to start. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the next thing. You, you've you also concurrently told me that um, based mm. on what you've seen in my regime, you are recommending that perhaps I should consider even um, BHA in my regime. And I, and I, mm. and, and to me, it's like, okay, this is way too much, right? I, it's like I have 101 products on my face already. So why, why BHA? We've just talked about AHA. What's the difference then? Mm. What's BHA? Okay, so... So BHA is beta hydroxyl acid. Right. So just now we talk about HA being water soluble, mm, right? Yeah. Um, on the other hand, um, BHA loves oil. It's actually oil soluble. Oh, that, that's my kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> oil, yeah. So the reason why BHA is different is because it's very good when it comes to sebum management, oil secretion management, <gasps> and a lot of acne products. Um, they actually use BHA but not AHA because it's also antibacterial. Okay, wait. So does that mean that... Um, mm. BHA products are technically more suitable for, let's say, um, people with a little bit uh, oily, uh, more oily skin uh, that typically has, let's say, acne mm. problems or adult acne. That would be that would be the products that they should be looking out for, right? Products with BHA. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So if you were to look at BHA, mm. right, um, I would say a lot of acne management product they do contain ah, BHA. Okay. Uh, it actually helps to. Uh, the difference is that BHA actually uh, goes into a deeper... That, that means it penetrates the pore really well. Mm. Uh, over, long, uh, o- over a long period of time, BHA product actually helps to lessen the sebum collection uh, around the pore's okay. area. So that's why a lot of blackhead products, they actually use BHA. Awesome. Sounds like mm. BHA will be very suitable for men in general. Because um, I, I realise yes. a lot of uh, men do have issues with like, you know, um, blackheads and um, typically a little mm. bit oilier skin, right? Yep. And actually one little tip is that uh, even for women, right, sometimes if you tend to realise that, okay, your skin uh, is very oily around the T-zone. Uh, especially, or even you have oily complexion. Especially during that time of the month. It, yeah. Mm, yeah, so maybe the, the makeup doesn't stay as okay. well. So some of the advice or some little tip is that you could actually use a BHA cleanser in the morning. 
Oh. So you cleanse your face with BHA, right? Um, is that some traces of BHA will actually uh, be left on your skin, mm. but it's being left there to kind of like manage the oil secretion, so you don't feel that the face is extremely oily throughout oh, the whole day. That's a good tip. That's a very uh, good tip. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. But uh, I would say if you are to use BHA cleanser, probably use it in the morning and at night. Uh, I guess. Uh, it wouldn't bother you as much in terms of oil secretion. I think that's fine. Okay, yeah. so that's interesting. We talked about mm. EHA, um, you know, as a topical use for night. And earlier on, we talked about you can mm. use, um, you know, let's say if it's a 5%, you can use it two to three times. Or if it's a higher dosage, I use it as a mask. So for BHA, you mm. sort of set the stage to say that, you know, um, if you typically find yourself with oilier skin in the morning, it's great to use um, BHA because it helps to control the oil um, secretion in, in uh in your face throughout the whole day so am i right or correct me if i'm wrong you're saying that bha in this case uh, might be recommended to use in the day then as the night hmm. um actually i would say still no okay. probably you will go for the night as ah. well yeah so okay. i would say both acid right just go for the night okay. I, I i personally always use them at night okay uh so for aha sorry for bha wise right uh, for beginners like what you mentioned uh how should you approach yeah. bha uh, in terms of percentage, right, you should go for 1%. Wow, that's, yeah. that's just 1% really plus low. minus. Okay, okay. Mm, yeah, so uh, in terms of a lot of like acne product, just to manage in terms like cleansers or toner, probably they contain around 1% plus okay. minus DHA. Okay. Yeah, it's not a lot. Uh, because a lot of times, all this product you can use daily. Like you can use the cleanser daily, you can use the toner I daily. See. So that's it's more a like a management product. Okay, so that's a different. Mm. So, but if you're talking about like acne cream mm. that probably contains a lot more. I yeah. see. So what would you mm. recommend then, you know, for BHA products? Mm, okay, so I don't use BHA on a daily okay. basis as well because um, to me, it's almost like, a, you know, twice a week or, you know, three times mm. a week management mm. product as well. Uh, I love, once again, uh, Rx. So they have a BHA liquid uh, power liquid. Uh, so, sorry, BHA blackhead power liquid. Okay. Uh, this product basically is BHA. Uh, it helps to remove or prevent the onset of uh, blackheads, which I totally love it. I think this is really great. So for my ultimate question today, right? Clearly you're someone that uses yes. both, right? In my case, I've not, yep. I don't think I've actively added these two acids into my regime. So I'm going to begin with, with you first. Mm. Um, so in okay. your case, how would you do it? I mean, we have seven days a week. We can't be greedy, right? There are some days you want to do, I don't know, mm. like uh, AHA, some day BHA. So what would it be like for you, your, your regime? Is it one, three, okay. five, two, four, six kind of thing? For me now, right, um, I use the BHA uh, liquid okay. toner um, probably like three times a week. I'm trying to step it up to four times. The reason being is that at night, um, I kind of like make sure that my night cream doesn't conflict with BHA. Okay. So I realized that, okay, they actually complement one another. So right. I just continue using right. with just an additional you no know, BHA. Right. But tonight, if, I mean, if nighttime I'm using retinol, then totally probably I would just use uh, a regular moisturizer like Cetaphil. Okay. That is very neutral. Right. So it doesn't yeah. interfere with the efficacy. Oh yeah, that's a good But point. today if you're yeah. stuck, yeah, so today if you are a first timer, right, uh, probably I would say that for guys, if blackhead, oily skin is your problem, uh, I would say that start with a toner, maybe start with two days a week, after which uh, you slowly step it up. The max probably I would say that, you know, there are some people can use daily, which is fine. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But for uh, maybe for yourself, if you feel that, okay, you just want generally, you want to stimulate the collagen growth, yes. you know, lighten the pigmentation, mm -hmm. uh, you can also start with AHA, be it, you know, those type of pads or, you know, like toner, yeah. or even an AHA pube, but I feel that if your skin is sensitive, maybe not the pube Yeah, first. I'm thinking not the pube, yeah. but I quite like the idea of using the mm. pad, so it's, it's kind of very fast-free mm. and it's... I kind of like it. Yeah, also. I kind of like the idea. I mean, the fact that I've also been seeing that, that ad that keeps popping up to me and with you telling me today, maybe, maybe <laughs> I will give that a shot. That, that will be a great way to sort of add into um, my daily uh, mm. uh, sort of uh, regime, right? And I could do this like two to three yep. times a week. That's about it. Yes. And I suppose that that jar yep. over there is also suitable for gentlemen to use clearly. Yeah, so... It's super good for ah, guys. Okay. It's super good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I must say I missed you a whole lot. Uh, I can't wait to get into the studio yes. next to you very, very soon. <laughs> yeah, right, into the studio very, very soon. Studio. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's it from us to you today, Beauty and yeah. the Gig. Um, so the next time we see you, 
Yeah. Yes. And we'll see you very soon. Hope you enjoy the episode. Bye. Miss you. Bye bye. Yay. <laughs>